we'll see what happens phases as far as weather goes here right now the sun is out but it's kind of dusky so you never know what's going to happen uh, but that's Houston especially at this time of the year with tropical storm season uh, it's kicking off but anyway I love my city I've had the opportunity to live in a number of different places that I definitely enjoy uh, but it's nothing like being home uh, five alone I'm here but look anyway uh, I want to talk to you about a couple things. Uh, we're going to close this out on a positive note, so I'm going to close this out on the Juneteenth concert that went on in L.A. where Kendrick set it off, uh, where we saw Bloods and Crips on the same stage, linking up, hooking up, tying flags, all the things that you want to see, and it's great sim from, a, from a symbolic perspective. But my question is going to be what we're going to do about it. We're going to talk about that at the end. We're going to close out with that. But there's something I got to call out. And I'm going to do it unapologetically for those of you who are looking for Dr. Rick Wallace, the scholar, the intellectual, and all of that. Y'all might want to kind of back up. And, and let some of my hard heads, some of my uh, headbangers come up to the front. Uh, this is going to be more about rick wallace and just being a black man and being a black man from an unapologetic platform and position i i, I don't I, i'm not one for bouncing back and forth to meet the expectations of those who don't look like me for the purpose of fitting in being accepted getting on whatever you want to say and so it gives me nothing but great pr pleasure uh to call out this chump Jason Whitlock um, and in comparison to uh, reach, impact and all that stuff uh, he's head and shoulders above where I have as far as his impact his reach and uh, all that stuff in social media and that's the sad thing is that first and foremost he like Stephen A at one point when he first emerged this guy was about being aware of issues that plagued the black community. He was a person who viewed things and spoke on things from a pro-black perspective. But what you're gonna find out and what he found out and what I've been talking about for years is very few people stay the course on that because what they found out very quickly is you end up either becoming a grifter or broke because people don't want the truth. People don't want substance. People want to be entertained. People want to be told what they want, especially in our community. Until we give more value to being educated than we do to being entertained, we're going to always be in last place. So what then you find is the people who are talking about nothing are getting on are the people on the other side who are the nexus of our suffering the people with the real true money and power see the value in you and see you as a way of literally bringing bringing discord uh, imbalance and so much else to the table that works in their favor that they give you the bag they give you the bag and since Jason Whitlock uh, remembers Stephen A. Smith was the first person to come out and say something uh, against Steve Nash getting the uh, Nets coaching job without having any Nets experience, any championship experience, blah, blah, blah. And since he's gotten the bag, he's been censored a couple of times, sat down a couple of times, and he'll go ham on black athletes about stuff that really don't matter or about stuff that actually makes no sense but sounds good and satiates the palate of people who really don't like us let's keep it real uh, and so when JJ Reddit gets hired with no coaching experience no championship pedigree to coach the Lakers he has a different perspective not as aggressive not as pointing out what the obvious is in this particular situation and it's because he's been paid to He's been paid to soften, to to buffer, to do a bunch of different things. Now, Jason Whitlock has to cater to a fan base. 
And what he found out a long time ago is the white fan base is far more loaded from a financial perspective. They can offer far more than what he can. Plus, there are more of them than it is of us. And it's easy to incite them. Everybody talks about how easy it is to set us off emotionally. It's easier to set them off. All you got to do is find something that points to their white privilege and tap it and they'll lose their mind. And all you have to do to satiate them is come in and soften the blow and make them feel as if they're under attack or that the way they feel is validated. Jason Whitlock is doing that specifically around Caitlin Clark and he's done it. He's attacked Simone Biles, who has absolutely nothing to do with women's basketball, and simply said something on Twitter, and he jumped on it. Why? Because every time he mentions Caitlin Clark, and he puts her in this stratosphere that nobody else belongs in but her, she is the next best thing since breathing oxygen. And this is nothing against Caitlin Clark. I actually like her as a player. Um, but I'm gonna get to the whole Angel Reese thing. But but the uh, thing is, so he came out against that, and he's had several uh, slights at Angel Reese. The late, late latest is that Angel Reese has absolutely no athletic ability. She has no post skills. She can't do anything, and that's why she's so envious of Caitlin Clark. Now, I am not in the habit of agreeing with. Robert Griffin III. I loved him as an athlete playing at Baylor uh, and doing some of the things he did. I hate that his career came to such an abrupt end so early because I think he was special. Uh, but his choice in mates, number one. Um, and again, I don't know the story and, you know, to each his own. I wish him and his wife the best. I don't wish any ill will. But he also gets paid for a perspective, but he's come out and he's been very clear that those two specifically, Angel Reese and Caitlin Clark, are being used to wage a race war, and that's on both sides. Uh, we're attacking Caitlin Clark for every possible thing we can get out of that, um, and they are doing the same with Angel Reese uh, while elevating uh, Clark to God status despite the numbers not showing it. And they're both having their learning curves and their learning experiences. And uh, the numbers don't uh, outline or play out or support what Whitlock is saying, that she's non-athletic and that she, don't, she doesn't have post skills. She literally has broken the rookie record for consecutive double doubles. She's probably going to break the rookie record for most double doubles in a season. She is a walking double double, something she's done from day one, from the moment anybody knew about her when she was at what Maryland until she came to LSU. Um, way back in AAU, for those of you like me that keep up with AAU ball, her and Cardosa, y'all thought that class was just an SEC thing uh, between the two of them going back and forth with each other on the court with Don and you know and all that stuff. No, they've been doing this stuff since high school, AAU. <clears throat> and I'm glad they're on the same team and I'm glad to see how they're uh, bonding and uh, getting along now that they're teammates. And I'm pretty sure they would look like, man, I'm glad we finally on the same team. Because they bang. They bang each other and nobody's sitting up whining. They banging. They going at it. And what Caitlin Clark has done is she's brought an uneducated fan base to, to, to women's basketball. They don't know about the physicality. They don't know about the aggression. They don't understand that the women's game right now is actually more physical than the men's game. You can't touch a man in, in, in the NBA. The women bang it. And women have a meaner streak. The guys in the NBA, unlike the era that was my favorite era, right up until uh, the last few years of Kobe, uh, it, it was this new thing where everybody's buddy buddy let's go out let's hang out everybody's you know cool and all this stuff when 
I remember it being at its height. Competition was fierce. Nobody wasn't liking nobody. I remember when Magic and, and, and Isaiah, who literally called themselves brothers and have been friends since kids, were ready to go to blows. And, and it's not about the violence, it's about the competitive nature. People wanna have, the players wanna have fun and that's what it is, it's a game. But the competitive nature of saying, I will not lose tonight. I see that more in the women's game. Uh, you know, some skill sets I see that are pretty nice. Overall, the athleticism isn't gonna be there. It's just simply not gonna be there when you compare them to men. But the competitiveness and the thing, and I love Asia Wilson, man, and her complete game. But there's so many other players in this league that are playing. Rakia Jackson is doing great as a rookie, and nobody's even talking about her. But I mean, uh, there's so many of these players on different teams, and all we are here talking about are the two rookies. And I, I get it, man. It's about money. It's about keep the name going. I'm all for capitalizing on the popularity. Here's my problem is Jason Whitlock knows what he's doing. I've, I've followed him long enough to know exactly who he is. He's a very intelligent person. He knows exactly what he's doing. And so when he is doing it, he's doing it specifically because he knows attacking um, Angel and uh, at the same time, elevating and praising Caitlyn is going to get those people riled up and rally. And they're coming with nothing but a sense of this person is all of this. And anything that happens is somebody hating on her or somebody trying to hurt her or somebody trying to attack her. And she's not even complaining. She understands. This is what you pay your dues as a rookie. You're going to get banged up. You're showing up, especially if you got a target on your back that says you're the next God of basketball, you're going to get checked. They're going to make you prove it. Now, it happened with Michael Jordan. It happened with Kobe. It's going to happen with her. It happened with all the stars, including her idol, Maya Moore, that you get there. Those girls are going to say, okay, you all let, I need to see it. Let me look at that. And that's all that's happening right now. I actually think she's got the type of heart that she's not going to lie down. She's not going to quit. She's going to show up. Let those kids play. Stop pushing racial narratives and let it play. Now, don't get me wrong. I understand that, nation, that, that we're, we're dealing with a racial caste system. I understand that there's a lot going on in this that you cannot deny. What I'm saying is don't flame it. Don't fan it. Don't push it. Don't make it an issue just so you can get clicks and likes. And the thing is, he is the last person to be talking about somebody being non-athletic. Now, don't get me wrong. Athletic players become older and get out of shape. I am not nearly in the shape I was when I was an athlete. But I can tell you that you, you wouldn't have to be around me long to know that, yeah, he probably used to be an athlete or he probably can use, he probably can still do X, Y, Z or whatever. This guy, nothing about him says he ever had a vertical. He ever ran a 40 and under anything uh, shocking. Uh, none of that. But he's out here trying to call out a kid who is one of the most consistent players since she stepped on the court. And the, watch how I give her all her uh, her accolades and I don't have to go attack the other girl to do it. That's the thing I'm talking about. See, when, when I make my point about somebody, I don't need to tear somebody else down to do it. Either the person is who they that I say they are, or if I've got to use somebody else to tear them down, uh, if I got to tear somebody else down to elevate them, then they aren't who I thought they were. And so I'm using uh, mental manipulation to do it. And so that is exactly what I am not uh, advocating. So that's that. He is a chump. He's a coward. He's a sellout. He's all of that. Uh, I personally don't use that C word, but if I use it, I'd definitely be throwing it at him right now. And you know the word I'm talking about. So that's that. Now, on to the K-Dot thing, man. Uh, I was excited to hear about what happened. Uh, we lose so many of our brothers. I was on yesterday talking about African-American adolescent and young adult male violence, fratricide, us killing us, and all of these different things. And to see what K-Dot was able to do uh, was important. 
um, and symbolically it had meaning but if we don't use the symbolic uh, representation and transform that into something extraordinary something special uh, we are going to be right back here this isn't the first time that we've seen these brothers come together Nipsey did it a couple of other people have done it and we have lost it because we are caught up in something else uh, we don't support platforms that actually push real information real knowledge uh, real solutions uh, real data and information that can inform and empower we want to be entertained we want to jump on everything we're too caught up in celebrity gossip and i can go on and on and on what i'm trying to get us to understand is that he did something special and not everybody can pull that off the one thing that it takes is respect and either side didn't respect him it wouldn't happen he has developed and garnered respect it's not for me to talk about whether he deserves respect. The thing is, they respect him. The thing is, what are we going to do to connect? What are we going to do to take that energy and create narratives that build something that can sustain beyond the emotional moment that we're experiencing right now? That is where you build things. You take the emotional moment, but you say this can't last. Emotions aren't, uh, aren't enduring. They're there and then eventually they subside what are we going to do with it to build a bridge to reality that is sustainable that's that's it i'm gonna leave it right there look for the people who believe in the work that we do at this channel show some love show some support because one thing we don't do with channels and platforms and people who are speaking truth to power who won't waver who take hit after hit because they do speak truth to power and then we don't love on them we don't take care of them I'm here right now telling you, you I get no I get no love and I still show up every day for my people in ways you can't possibly imagine daily. And I will continue to do so until I take my last breath. But I'm also going to challenge you, show up. Look in the description box. Give, share, like and all that other good stuff. On that note, I'm out of here. You guys have a great day.